Hey there, Facebook family. How you doing? Prophet David Taylor here. Here to give you your weekly prophetic live word uh, from the Word of God and it's led by the Holy Spirit. As you know, I pray each week before I come on and ask the Lord what word does He want me to share? What does He want me to release to the body of Christ? So if, you, if it's your first time joining us, those of you that aren't familiar with the prophetic, the prophetic means to speak by divinely inspired utterance. It means to speak by the Holy Ghost, okay? It does not mean to speak according to what we know as humans or our own intuition or our own mind or our own leading. It means that you listen to the Spirit of God and you speak forth what the Spirit of God is saying. Sometimes that includes prognostication. Hey, Gerald, how are you? Sometimes that includes prognostication. Prognostication is telling the future. But it doesn't always necessarily have to. Okay? So again, if this is your first time listening to the broadcast, um, I'm Prophet David Taylor, and to prophesy means to speak by divinely inspired utterance. Uh, yeah, let me finish. Uh, when I'm doing it, then I'll get back to you. So don't leave or bring that up to me at the end, a prophetic word for you. Okay? So to speak, to prophesy means to speak by divinely inspired utterance. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Spirit of God giving you something to say. So that's what I mean when I say I pray every week before I come out because I'm listening to the Holy Ghost. I'm listening to what the Spirit of God wants me to release. Okay? And so, the prophetic word for today is the word elder. E-L-D-E-R in English, the word elder. Elder. So I asked the Holy Ghost, what is it that you want me to release? What is it about that word? What's our scripture reference and what is it that you want said? So our scripture reference is Titus 2.3. We're going to refer to some other scriptures, but we're going to start with Titus 2.3. And I'm reading out of the Berean Study Bible version. Titus 2.3 says, Older women, older women likewise are to be reverent in their behavior, not slanders or addicted to much wine, but teachers of good. If we look at that in the New Living Translation, it says, Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. They must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach others what is good. So I want to use that as a reference to the word elder. Okay. Now, I know there are plenty of other places in the Bible where the word is translated in English, elder. For example, there is Acts 15.4 where it says, on their arrival in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and apostles and elders to whom they reported all that God had done through them. Well, that word elder there comes from the Greek, Greek word presbuteros. Presbuteros, okay? And that's talking about an elder, a member of the Christian leadership, okay? But I'm not talking about elder in that sense, Okay? The word in Titus 2.3 comes from the same root word, the word in Titus 2.3, when it says older women, that word there is presbutus, and it means an old woman, and that's Strong's Concordance 4247, if you want to look it up. <clears throat> so what am I talking about? What, it, what is it that I'm trying to arrive at? What is it that, I'm, that we're trying to release here? What I'm trying to release is that the Holy Ghost showed me that some of you listening to me right now and some of you that will tune into this broadcast, God is going to bring a mentor, an older person, an elder, a teacher into your life. And the word of God to you is to not reject them when they show up. Now, why is that so important? I'll tell you why. Because when God is leading you into new things, when he's leading you into new lands, into new territories, when he's leading you, for example, into a new marriage, when he's leading you into new levels of finances, when he's leading you to own a home, and you've never owned a home before, when God is leading you to a new college, when God is leading you to live in a new state. <clears throat> Whenever you are going someplace new and you're being led by the Holy Ghost, when you get to that new place, there's going to be things about it that you don't know. There's going to be things about the game at that level that you don't know because you've never done it. 
Okay? You've never been there before. And what God is going to do, he's going to send someone alongside of you into your life to show you the ropes, to mentor you. And it's going to be an elder, an older person, someone that's further down the road of life than you are. And many times what we do in today's modern culture is we tell people that they're old, they don't count anymore, they're not relevant, they don't do it that way anymore, that their thoughts are archaic, that that they don't have anything to say about today, and that is incorrect. And always, as you always know, I always give very, very practical examples when I teach. So let me, let me give you some practical examples of what that would look like, and you see what I mean. For example, let's say <clears throat> you come into a lot of money. Now, I know a lot of money is relative, but let's say you come into a lot of money. And let's say your finances increase from where they are right now, to tenfold. <clears throat> so however much money you're making, let's say you make, I'm just picking a figure here, let's say you make $30,000 a year. And let's say all of a sudden God lifts you to a level where you're making $300,000 a year. Let's say you make <clears throat> $50,000 a year and we times that by 10 and all of a sudden you're making $500,000 a year. You know what that means? That means that you have never functioned on that level of finances before. And you need someone that's familiar with that level to show you the ropes, to show you how to do it, to show you what to do with money at that level. Okay? Let's say you just got married. You just got through with the wedding ceremony. It was beautiful and the bride was lovely and the, the bridal party and the groomsmen. It was great and everything went off well. The music was good. The food was good. The dancing afterward was good. You just had the best time. It was just the best wedding ever. Okay? Well, now it's time for the marriage. <laughs> And if you've never been married before, if that's the first time you've been married, you don't know how marriage is going to go. You're still new to it. So what you need is an elder. You need a mentor. You need someone older than you. That's the point I need to stress. They're going to be older than you. Do not dismiss them out of your life because you're going to need them to come alongside you and show you how to do what you're trying to do. Because if you're trying to build a good marriage, good marriages have already been built. But you need to listen to people that are further down the road of life so they can mentor you, so they can school you, so they can teach you how to build one. If you're trying to build great wealth, great wealth has been built many times over and over and over again in every generation. There's somebody that has great wealth. If you are trying to build great wealth, you need to listen to people that have had money for a while. People that have made their mistakes, people that know the ropes, the ins and outs of money. They're going to come alongside you to mentor you. Another thing is, let's say, for example, you get famous. If you've never been famous before, there's some things that come along with fame that you're not familiar with. So that being the case, you need someone that's already been famous for a while to come in your life and say, this is how you handle this. This is how you handle that. This is what this means. This is what that means. Okay? For example, several people that are brand new to fame have talked about getting death threats. And it's the first time in life they ever had to deal with anything like that. And they had to go to the FBI and they had to deal with that whole thing because it's a whole new ball game now. Because now all of a sudden, everybody knows who you are. Yesterday you could go to the grocery store and nobody cared. Today you go to the grocery store and people are following you around with cameras. And everybody's looking at everything that you're eating. And you can't say anything because anything you say is going to become a soundbite. It's going to become a clip. It's going to be on YouTube, it's going to be on Instagram, and they're going to play it over and over and over and over and over again. And then all of a sudden, in people's minds, that's who you are now. <clears throat> you said one sentence, and now all of a sudden, that's who people think you are. That's what comes along with sudden fame. Okay? Uh, let's say, for example, you are transitioning to an academic career. Let's say you're going to school for the first time. You're fresh out of high school, and you're going to a four-year university. Well, I stopped by to tell you, if you've never been to college before, college is a trip. <laughs> and you need somebody that has graduated, that has been there before, to come alongside you and tell you, this is how you make it through a college career. Because I guarantee you, with every new endeavor, they always work the same way. They're really exciting in the beginning, and then there's a long, messy middle, and then there's a triumphant end. Everything is exactly like that. When you first start out, it's like running a marathon. When you first start out, everybody's pumping, everybody's fist bumping, woo-hoo, everybody's all excited. 
all at the starting line and everybody's jumping around and blah, 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 blah. Because when you start something new, there's that energy, there's that excitement, there's that lift that you get, that rush. But then there's going to be a messy middle. There's going to be bumps, there's going to be bruises, there's going to be mistakes, there's going to be things that you didn't count on. Things are going to happen that you didn't even think would happen, that didn't occur to you would happen back at the starting line. Okay? There's going to be unfairness. There's going to be evil you have to wrestle with. Sometimes it'll be things in your own heart. Sometimes it'll be things that you didn't know were in you, and then you get in the messy middle, and all of a sudden something come out of you that you didn't know was in you, and now you got to deal with it. And then there's going to be a triumphant end, and there's going to be far less people at the end then we're at the beginning, I guarantee you. Uh, when you graduate high school, when you graduate college, if you get married and you say till death do us part and you mean that, when you get to your older years, there's going to be far less couples, and not just because of death, but because all them people didn't stay together. All the people got married young and they took them vows, they didn't stay together. Okay, Everybody's not going to get a 50th wedding anniversary because everybody's not going to make it. And it's not going to be because of death. Some people are just going to break up. Okay? So there's going to be a really, really exciting beginning. Then there's going to be a long, messy middle. Especially about college. College feels just exactly like that. It's so excited the first time you go on campus. So excited when you see all the new buildings. So excited when you're meeting new people. So exciting when you're taking classes that you love. That's just when you start. Because before it's all over, it's going to be a long, messy middle. And then it's going, it's going to seem like it's a long way until your graduation day. But there's going to be a triumphant end, and I guarantee you, you are going to graduate with less people than who started. All the people that started with you are not going to graduate in your class. I guarantee you, write it down. Okay? And so that being the case, the Lord is going to send someone in your life to mentor you, someone that is an elder. So do not dismiss them because they're older. That is a huge mistake. If you are a 20-year-old, 20 20-something 20 person, and you just got married, you need somebody 40 or 50. Again, like I'm telling you, I always give very practical examples in my teaching. And if you are just getting married in your 20s, you need somebody minimum 40 or 50. That's right. Respect them, and they have pure wisdom. That's right. You need somebody 40 or 50 to come in your life and tell you how the marriage thing goes. You need somebody to come in your life and show you how the ropes go when you get married because it's not what you think it is, okay? And so that's what I'm saying about how God is going to send those people in your life very soon, especially if he's taking you to the promised land, he's taking you to a new level, he's taking you to a new uh, experience, and he's going to bring someone in your life. Do not dismiss them. Do not write them off, okay? They're going to impart to you wisdom and I'm going to pray and release a prophetic word because I need to impart that to you as well. They're going to impart to you wisdom. They're going to give you wisdom. They're going to give you things that you don't know. They're going to give you ways of doing things. They're going to give you things that you uh, don't have on your own. Okay? So, do not dismiss the elder. Do not despise them when God sends them in your life. All right? Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the prophetic and I'm going to release a word and I'm going to release an anointing for you to receive the elder mentoring that's coming into your life. For God says, oh, my people, you are my love. You are the apple of my eye. You are ever precious to me. You are on my mind. My thoughts to you are so plentiful. You could not count them if I showed them all to you. For behold, the days do come where I lift your life to the next level. And whenever there's a new level, there's a new devil to fight. There's a new challenge, a new struggle. Behold, I open new doors. Behold, I give new finances. Behold, I start new relationships. But I send unto you one that will come alongside you to mentor an elder that will show you how to navigate, how to overcome, the traps to avoid, the way to make plans, two, five, seven, ten-year plans, the way so you can navigate your way to success and victory, and the new thing that I'm giving you. 
And now behold, I release unto you the anointing to receive your elder. I release unto you the anointing to receive their wisdom. I release unto you the anointing to receive your mentoring so that you can navigate this new land and this new level so that you can be successful, so that you can be victorious. You will not reject them. You will not dismiss them. You will not disrespect them, but you will receive them. You will know them by the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God will witness inside of you, and they will show you how to do what you're trying to do in this new phase of your life, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. <clears throat> so, oh Lord, I hope I didn't lose my Periscope audience. So anyway, that's uh, what the, the Lord has released, and that is what God wants, to, wants us to do to get ready for that mentoring, and I feel edified and blessed by that word, and I'm so glad I got a chance to share that word with you. Uh, let me close out with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your anointed word. We thank you for being uh, the God of all time, the God of past, present, and future, and the God of the eternal now. And we thank you for bringing us into this new level, the new promised land, the new experience. And thank you for the elders that you sent alongside us to mentor us, to help us to navigate the space and to become all that you want us to be. And we thank you for it and we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, and we receive it right now. Amen. Amen and amen. And God bless. I think I lost my Periscope audience. Okay, I'm going to come back on and finish that word. But God bless your Facebook audience. And I'm here every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, to release the prophetic word of God to you live. God bless. Talk to you next week.